prevention of asthma in allergic rhinitis patients can be achieved by AIT, but um, there is no generic class effect, so we cannot say that all products in AIT reach this goal. Um, you have to look at the very product-specific evidence um, for all the products by uh, showing these effects of AIT. Hmm? It's likely that asthma can be prevented in allergic rhinitis patients by allergen immunotherapy. The evidence thus far is not perfect, but there's a long-term study by Muller looking at allergen immunotherapy in children with grass pollen allergy and showing that those who received immunotherapy were less likely to develop asthma than those who received only pharmacotherapy. And this was true at three, five and ten years. And the likelihood of developing asthma was almost completely ablated. But that was not a perfect double-blind control prospective study. There has been a similar study using grass pollen tablets, also looking for prevention of asthma as an outcome, which did show the prevention of asthma symptoms, but did not achieve its primary objective of actually preventing asthma as diagnosed by bronchial hyperactivity tests, because so few children actually developed asthma. So those two trials give us the idea that grass pollen allergen immunotherapy might be preventative. We also know from house dust mite tablet studies that asthma can be treated by house dust mite allergen immunotherapy, which suggests that possibly in patients with house dust mite induced allergic rhinitis, the asthma might be preventable. There's a very exciting concept emerging and some data to now support that, that using AIT, allergen immunotherapy, sublingual now, um, we can actually, in children and adults with allergic rhinitis, it may actually work to reduce the incidence of new asthma in those populations. Now, our studies are, are mostly observational and there are confounders but the data is very suggestive that it may well help to prevent. And obviously we need exciting, large studies in this space, but I think it's the beginning of that concept. I think the most relevant issue here is to increase the awareness of this merit of um, AIT, um, not only to physicians, but also to our patients. So with other words, we have a good, solid evidence that um, there is a disease-modifying effect of AIT. There's good data out for um, skid and slit, again, on individual products. But we have to educate our colleagues about these uh, merits. We have to train them in a the better way. Um, we have to come to a stage that there is an improved collaboration between healthcare providers, allergists and of course, communication with patients. I think prevention of asthma cannot yet be implemented into daily practice until we know more about which patients are best protected against asthma. And for that, I think we need more data, preferably from a big European database of people receiving allergen immunotherapy so that we can work out which subjects are the best to treat to prevent asthma. I suspect it will be children, and I suspect it will be house dust mite allergic children, possibly those who initially have bronchial hyperreactivity. But I could be wrong. When we think about clinical practice and whether AIT can practically be used to prevent asthma, I think at this point in time, really we should be treating the allergic rhinitis in its own right. So if it justifies the AIT, then we should be treating it for that. I don't think we can be treating it to prevent the asthma yet. However, we do have a very good asthma predictive index that's been developed. And in children who we know are more likely to go on to develop asthma and they've got allergic rhinitis, it would be another thing that would be making me think about the value of using AIT.